G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel once again. Uh, today we are going to dip momentarily back into some trade content and take a look 12 months into the future and maybe talk about some of the deals that could potentially happen in next year's trade period. Looking at, you know, contract statuses and some of the rumors that we've heard already, there's already a little bit of buzz going on about it. And I know you guys have a big appetite for trade content, so why not? This would be a bit of fun. So yeah, just I've picked out like 10 players or something like that and tried to make a bit of an assessment of how likely it is I think these players will move clubs and there are some big quality names on the uh, potentially on the market anyway obviously players can re-sign throughout the season but are quite a few good players out of contract next year you would have seen recently I have dropped a couple of big videos I suppose I've done my uh, October post trade period phantom draft guys so if you want to check that out it's a couple of videos back on the channel equally I just did a reaction video to my early season predictions for 2023 that one was very very humbling so Go check them out. And uh, as well, if you are watching this video and you've watched the other videos and you haven't subscribed to the channel, it would mean a lot to me. It has been a really good period of growth for the channel, but still only 43% of the people who watch my videos have subscribed. We're trying to get that number up to 50. So if you could take a second, subscribe to the channel, I would very much agree. Cool, let's crack into it. I haven't really ordered these in any particular order, but I will start off with a guy that I've talked about a little bit in this trade period uh, because media sources have also talked about this. But uh, Logan McDonald from the Sydney Swans is a good player that is going to be coming out of contract in 12 months time. He was uh, peak four or five, I think, uh, back in 2020 to the Sydney Swans. And he's been a pretty good player for them. Kind of a Buddy Franklin heir apparent, you would say. He's played 44 games now, uh, kicked 56 goals. This year, he played 20 games and kicked 32 goals. And I do think as a player that is prodigiously talented, in my opinion, and probably one of the players that I would love West Coast to get outside of our current list in the competition right now. You feel like this would be a big year for him. So it's not a shock that he hasn't um, you know, extended his contract yet because he's probably backing himself to have a good year this year and earn a pretty sizable contract. But he is uh, West Australian and out of contract, so he will attract interest, particularly from the two WA clubs. There has been some conjecture, obviously, with Fremantle loading up with draft picks in 2024's draft and deciding to ignore 2023's a little bit. There has been a suggestion they've got a target. Logan McDonald would make a world of sense, uh, if, if that's a real expression. So I can expect Fremantle will be going for him. I know West Coast absolutely will be trying really hard to get Logan McDonald. West Coast would be a really hard sell to try and get a player that's about to enter his prime to go to a rebuilding club. They would have to really have a good year in 2024 and sell a future, potentially with Harley Reid, potentially with someone else. So they're up against it, but the two WA clubs will come sniffing. Uh, I imagine, you know, there's going to be a few teams on the market for a key forward next year. There's been talk of Hawthorne if they don't have other targets. And I can see Collingwood also having a big crack at Logan McDonald. So until he signs, he's going to be some of the hottest property available. Um, honestly, my prediction is probably that he is more likely to stay at Sydney than necessarily go to a WA club where it's a little bit speculative what happens. Again, Fremantle need to have a good year to sell their future. So I'll predict he stays at the City Swans. They have a really good uh, habit of retaining key players, but uh, it's one to watch for sure. Let's talk about Sean Darcy now from the Fremantle Football Club. Probably one of the biggest names, again, to be talked about as a potential move next year. And it is a free agency year for him, which means that it's his eighth year on the Fremantle list. And uh, as a result, he qualifies for free agency. Almost certainly going to be a restricted free agent because he's going to be well paid at Fremantle, you'd imagine. Now, there's links to him and Geelong in particular. There were rumors they offered him five million over five years, which I believe has been refuted. That wasn't actually offered. So regardless though, there is no way that a club like Geelong or you know some of these other big Victorian clubs wouldn't be interested in Sean Darcy. I think he has the potential to be an all-Australian ruckman. He's not that far off the pace already. And he's a supremely key player to Fremantle's hopes. You know, when he's in the side versus when he's not, I feel like there is a big difference there. So honestly, like with Fremantle's history over the last seven years of retaining players, I do think this is more likely to happen. So if I had to predict, I'll say Sean Darcy does join Geelong at free agency, particularly with their off-season strategy. Routinely, they're going to be scouring the market for established players. Players, I think I think Sean Darcy makes sense, and I don't back Fremantle to keep him at this rate. Next, let's talk about Jamara Ugal Hagen, pick one in the 2020 draft, and another big key forward target that is going to be out of contract with a whole heap of talent and potential, and we've definitely seen flashes of it, uh, probably more than flashes of it at AFL level. So he uh, kicked 35 goals from 23 games this year, which is a solid result for a young key forward. He's played 45 now, so again, around that 50 game threshold is where players really start to step up. So I do foresee that happening with Jamara Ugal Hagen. He's out of contract, and there's also this 
elephant in the room here with, with the Western Bulldogs and their key forward production line. So in addition to Aaron Norton signing a 10-year deal, deal to stay at the club, they're going to draft Jordan Croft in this year's draft, who won't leapfrog uh, Ugo Hagen as such, but there's also Sam Darcy. I don't know if they're going to play him back or forward or what, but either way, there's a little bit of a log jam there, and I can see Ugo Hagen probably looking sideways at some opportunities, in particular teams like Hawthorne and Collingwood, who are going to be on the market for a key forward if they can afford one, will certainly come knocking on the door. So if I had to predict something here, just for the fun of the video, I'll say Ugo Hagen do- joins Hawthorne at next offseason. Should clarify as well, this will require a trade. This is not a free agency move. Next, let's talk about Taron Thomas from the North Melbourne Football Club. He is out of contract at the end of 2024. And, uh, you know, I think we've seen flashes of his prodigious talent. He ended the year really, really well for North Melbourne. Now, he has previously been linked to moves to the Sydney Swans and the Essendon Football Club. Essendon more recently, I think Essendon this year and Sydney in 2022 as a potential trade option. Both times elected to stay with North Melbourne, both times contracted, I would have thought, certainly this year. He's obviously had some off-field issues, you know, behavioral issues. Um, he's been a bit of a wild card for North Melbourne. So there is some motive there for North Melbourne to potentially look at a, a trade quite seriously. He does hail from Tasmania, so there's no go-home factor as such. It's just about where he thinks he can play his best football. So as far as I'm concerned, like he's talented enough for Alistair Clarkson probably to want to keep him and I'd say that North Melbourne probably has this year to try and prove to Taron Thomas as well that there is success building in the future because that is an important motivator for players so if I had to guess I'll say this probably does happen I think probably more likely Sydney than Essendon. Why is that my prediction? Well, first of all, um, there's been too much noise of him leaving every off-season and the behavioural issues. I think it makes it far more likely that he is going to leave than stay. Um, why Sydney? Well, Essendon have just loaded up with targets lately, and, uh, and I think Sydney is probably more of an attractive destination. Next, we've got Tim English, who is the reigning All-Australian Ruckman, who is going to enter free agency th- at the end of this season, or 2024 rather, and uh, obviously can sign with any club that he chooses. Now, Previously, I would have thought West Coast would be up to their neck in this, and they probably still are. But first of all, they need a contingency for Nick Natanui. The only thing here is that they have just signed Matthew Flynn on a three-year deal. Now, don't get me wrong. Matthew Flynn is not the same quality as a Tim English. But it is weird to sign a player on a three-year deal with some promise of first-team game time, uh, only for him to get sidelined as soon as Tim English comes in. So I don't know if the, the plan has changed there. West Coast will have money for him, you'd think. But again, West Coast have been so disastrously poor over the last couple of years, you could imagine why Tim English wouldn't want to go play there but there has been a strong link a stronger link to West Coast than any other club the other one here is Fremantle that could be a wild card um, naturally uh, well, they haven't really been linked to Tim English publicly from what I can see however if they lose Sean Darcy do they go down that route do they prefer Jackson as the not number one ruck otherwise it's still a lot of money to be tied up in ruck talent on their list so it'll be interesting to see if I had to guess what happens though I'd say he stays at the Western Bulldogs now let's talk again about the Western Bulldogs this time Bailey Smith and uh, coincidentally I actually worked up with the intention of making this video anyway but it turns out uh, there was an article today um, highlighting there is a really realistic chance that Bailey Smith leaves the Western Bulldogs at the end of this year so there was a bit of conjecture about it this year it was kind of hosed down several times but nonetheless the noise was there and there was talk of uh, you know Bailey Smith having been sign lined in that midfield being you know pushed out to a wing or half forward or whatever it was I know that Bailey Smith came out and uh, expressed a, a desire to stay at the Western Bulldogs get stuck in and earn his spot back as part of that midfield rotation but John Ralph reported this morning that there is an 80% chance, he reckons, that's his opinion, 80% chance that Bailey Smith leaves. I think Callum Toomey also said something similar a few weeks back, probably not as, as strong a terms, but on Gettable, he guessed that Bailey Smith would leave. And then Sam McClure also said, um, if you put any notice into that, Sam McClure said that Collingwood and Essendon are also trying hard, which is not a surprise. We shouldn't be surprised that teams are going for him. It's just a case of whether he would want to leave. He will be out of contract at the end of that year. He will not be a free agent, so it'll be a case of a trade happening. If I had to guess, you know, I'd say Hawthorne and Geelong are probably the two most likely options. I'd imagine Geelong probably goes harder. Again, there's kind of contingent on the Sean Darcy thing. Can Geelong secure both Sean Darcy and Bailey Smith in the same offseason? Potentially. I think they've got something like 14 free agents next year because so many of their veterans are out of contract. So they could find a way to get some money. But Geelong or Hawthorne makes sense. I think Bailey Smith goes. 
Another one of the big names is Ben King, who will be out of contract this year after so far uh, staying loyal to the Gold Coast Suns when there's been talk pretty much every contract time that he might leave. Uh, but so far, so good. Again, though, he is out of contract and it's an interesting market this year with key forwards potentially on uh, available to their clubs. And there has been a link between Ben King and Hawthorne in recent times. I also think Collingwood would also really love to get a Ben King on their list. He really adds something that they don't. And they're obviously the premiership team right now, but a strong key forward like that, they, his level's above Dan McStay in terms of talent. So I'd expect them to come hard as well. Hardwick is the interesting variable here. You know, Ben King staying at Stewie Jew's Gold Coast Suns, you could think that's a little bit more speculative. But if Damien Hardwick comes in and sells a future and has a good first season and the Suns potentially play finals, that could be the factor that, that convinces Ben King to stay loyal to the Gold Coast Suns. I don't really know what to predict for this one, to be honest. Uh, it's worth noting as well, a trade would be required for him to uh, leave the Gold Coast Suns. He's not a free agent. So I'd say I'm probably leaning towards Ben King joining someone like a Collingwood, to be honest. The reason being as well, this is uh, this is a big contract year for him. It will take him past free agency if he signs with the Gold Coast Suns again. So if he signs a long contract, it's just a big commitment to the Gold Coast Suns. And I, I, I'd love to say he stays at the Gold Coast Suns, but I think Collingwood might uh, just be able to weasel him out. Speaking of Gold Coast Suns players, Ben Ainsworth is another player that is out of contract and he is a good little half forward slash midfield who's kind of made uh, steady improvements over the course of you know a period of time. It's been linear improvement from him, um, and I think there will certainly be some interest in the market for him. Curiously, he only signed a two-year extension a couple of years ago, which takes him deliberately to free agency. Now, you can read that two ways. Like He could be deliberately signing for free agency so that uh, it frees him up to leave the club in an easier fashion. Alternatively, though, it could just be smart business because coming out of contract uh, during your free agency is where you're going to secure probably the biggest contract of your life. This is where I could see, you know, some of the smaller Victorian clubs really uh, being a chance for Ben Ainsworth, while the other big clubs clamor over the key forwards. You know, a North Melbourne could be a shout for him, St Kilda, even a Richmond potentially as well. Again, this is a free agency situation. It doesn't depend on um, like tr trade collateral and potentially if North or uh, St Kilda have some extra money, they could offer him a offer that Gold Coast can't match. So I'm iffy on that one. I could see it happening. Gold Coast are a little bit hard to read, because they have offloaded key players before, or not key players, but players you'd think they'd want to keep. They've offloaded them for the sake of money before. So we'll see what happens there. Todd Marshall is also out of contract for Port Adelaide. Um, he is 25, injured at the moment, but put together a couple of decent seasons. What is it? 36 goals last year and 45, 15 the year before. And he's kind of come into his own as the mainstay Port Adelaide key forward. With, with Charlie Dixon also like not really being the player that he used to be, there is a clear need and value to Port Adelaide for keeping him. So I will guess that he's Days. He's from country New South Wales, I believe. I'm not sure if he was drafted out of Victoria. I, uh, let me know in the comments if he was. But regardless, I think he's probably going to be established in that Port Adelaide forward line. I will guess that Todd Marshall stays with Port. Elliot Himmelberg is a player that I think is kind of a Monty to leave Adelaide. So uh, obviously there was talk of him uh, leaving Adelaide for the GWS Giants this offseason. Uh, he is contracted. He was open to a move. Adelaide said, look, maybe if we can find a replacement, they missed out on Marvio Chol. Elliot Himmelberg decides to stay with the Adelaide Crows, but he He's only contracted for one more year. So I think that will change in 12 months time when he is out of contract. The Giants will probably come knocking again and he will probably join his brother at the GWS Giants. Another interesting one is Cam Zerha, who goes to free agency. A couple of years ago, he signed a two-year deal with North Melbourne to take him to free agency. Apparently, there was interest from Essendon around that period. I don't remember that, but that's what my research tells me. So you'd imagine uh, as a free agent and a talented player that wouldn't cost the world, you'd expect there would be a market for him. I'd imagine there's no reason why both WA clubs wouldn't be interested for different reasons. Freeman obviously wants some goal scoring power, just lost Lucky Shules. West Coast probably still, uh, even though they're rebuilding, looking to add through free agencies some experienced players to help that list blend. So I can see West Coast also be interested. And of course, Essendon were interested. Does that change now they've got Jade Gresham? Potentially. I will guess that Cam Zerha re-signs with North Melbourne though. Now I'm going to rattle off uh, some of the names that are still significant, but I just don't think are super realistic as trade possibilities, but uh, that is just my opinion. So we'll start with Brandon Stasevich. He's a player that I mentioned already. Uh, I have read a big footy rumor that the Eagles have been into him for a long time. He's going to be out of contract at the end of this year and fits the Eagles um, list profile perfectly. Freeman will probably have less of a need for a player of his type. Is there any chance Stasevich leaves Brisbane? Honestly, I'd be amazed if he left Brisbane to join West Coast. I think his dad's still involved at Brisbane as well. So he's going to be firmly established, but I thought I'd mention it. 
Then there's Andrew McGrath, former number one pick in the 2016 draft. He will be out of contract and uh, I believe a free agent at the end of the season this year. Now, he's a decent player. I'd imagine the Dons should have enough money to retain him. And I do think I can't really see why he would leave Essendon as a, as a local boy. Would it be to chase more success? Well, some of the, the more successful Victorian sides that I've mentioned probably have their hands full with targets. I could be wrong about that. I just don't really get the feeling that Andrew McGrath is likely to walk out on Essendon. Another player of that same description, Hugh McCluggage from the same draft, pick three from memory. He's out of contract at the Brisbane Lions, again, another restricted free agent and uh, an absolute gun player. There hasn't really been any suggestion that McCluggage has been looking out. I'd imagine there will be some Victorian clubs that come hard, um, potentially a Geelong if they miss out on their other targets. You know, the Saints, North, Essendon, you know, I think a lot of clubs would be interested in Hugh McCluggage, not even just Victorian ones. That being said, you know, Brisbane has developed a really good culture there and I just don't see them bleeding plays. You know, if a player like Devin Robertson, who's short to medium and even long term prospects of getting a game regularly at the Brisbane Lions is, is seriously in doubt. And what I mean by that is, you know, like the amount of young midfielders they've got coming through, then I just can't imagine some of their more established players leaving. So I'll, I'll say McCluggage luggage stays. There is also Harrison Petty from the Melbourne Football Club. Obviously, this one uh, didn't reach a trade resolution this year. Adelaide came hard for him. Melbourne had said, no, thank you. I will say as well that he is contracted for until 2025, and I think he might be a free agent then. So I expect this one to be asked the question uh, by Adelaide again. I think he is a key player to Melbourne. The only thing that may change this is the fact that he will be a pre agent. So, a year out from a free agency, clubs might be tempted to trade a player because they can get a decent trade offer for him in the short term rather than wait a year and get less compensation as a free agent. That could happen. I'll still say he stays at Melbourne for at least one more year and then leaves in 25. And finally, we've also got Richmond's Jack Graham as a restricted free agent uh, at the end of this year. Now, Graham seems like a loyal type. I don't really see him leaving. But again, the prospects of Richmond in the short term don't look amazing. I could have that wrong. Maybe they'll surprise me. But they're at an awkward point in their list transition with um, you know Dusty Martin right at the end of his career and some pretty modest talents around. Like there's some genuine guns in that team. But the only way I can see him leaving Richmond if he is if he's looking at what this team looks like in 12, 24 months and he sees the writing on the wall and he goes back to South Australia. So I'd say Richmond would have to fall off a cliff for him to leave, but that is still possible, to be honest. All right, guys, that wraps up my take on the players out of contract or at least going to be a topic of trade discussion over the course of this year. You know, some of these will get locked away throughout the year naturally, but some won't. And I reckon some of those clubs will move. I'm bound to get at least one prediction right, right? Maybe, who knows? But I appreciate you watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.